Undercover Israeli forces infiltrate a hospital in the West Bank and kill three militants. More on that coming up. Hamas studying a new proposal for a truce in Gaza, but says its position on a complete withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza has not changed. And new details on the three American service members killed in a drone strike on a U.S. base in Jordan. Well, we start with what the official Palestinian news agency calls an assassination inside a hospital in the occupied West Bank. The video that you are watching now shows undercover Israeli forces infiltrating the Ibn Sina hospital disguised as medical staff and Palestinian civilians, including as women. Israel's far-right national security minister, Itamar Ben-Gavir, shared this clip on social media, congratulating the forces on a, quote, impressive operation against what he called terrorists. Well, officials on both sides confirm that the IDF killed three young Palestinian men. Hamas said the men were Janine Brigade's fighters, an umbrella group of armed Palestinian factions within the Israel-occupied city of Janine, and that one was a member of Hamas's military wing. Hospital officials there say the men were sleeping at the time of the attack. CNN senior international correspondent Ben Weedham was inside that very hospital just a few months ago. Ben, what do you make of uh, what we've seen? Well, certainly this is a fairly brazen attack. It happened between 5 and 6 a.m. About a dozen Israeli soldiers, as you said, disguised as medical personnel, women. They had a wheelchair with them. One of them was carrying a baby's car seat. Uh, they got up to the third floor of the hotel, uh, the hospital, excuse me, and headed to a room where there were three young men. Now, the Israeli military says that uh, the target in this case was Mohammed Jalabne, who they say was involved in previous attacks on Israeli forces uh, who have gone into the Janine refugee camp, which is just a few minutes walk away from that the Ibn Sina hospital and has been the scene of dozens and dozens of Israeli incursions uh, into the camp. They shot him and two other men. One of the men, Basil Ghazawi, uh, was in the hospital. He was actually injured in an Israeli airstrike on the Janine refugee camp back in October, an airstrike that killed four Palestinian uh, youths, including a 15-year-old boy. Now, as a result of that airstrike, he was partially paralyzed in his lower body. And what we understand from Hotel, uh, hospital staff uh, is that he was lying in his bed with his head on the pillow when the Israeli hit squad came in, shot him at point blank, blank range while his head was still on the pillow. Now, this isn't the first time Israeli special forces have used disguises to go into Palestinian towns and institutions. Just a few years ago, an Israeli squad went into the Birzeit University outside of Ramallah, disguised as, Palest as Palestinian crew of journalists, and grabbed a Palestinian student leader. Now, since the beginning of the war in Gaza on the 7th of October, the Israelis have dramatically escalated uh, their operations in the West Bank, killing, I think, more than 200 uh, people at this point. Now, the Hamas itself did acknowledge that the three men were members of the Janine Brigades, which is an umbrella group operating mostly in the Janine refugee camp that includes members of Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and other, other Israeli factions who have been very active trying to resist Israeli forces as they, as they have made, as I said, dozens of raids on the camp in Janine. Becky. Ben Wiedemann, out of uh, Beirut in Lebanon today. Ben, good to have you. Thank you. Well, Hamas says it is, and I quote them here, studying a new proposal for a truce with Israel. But in a new statement, the group makes clear its position has not 
changed. It wants nothing less than a complete withdrawal of Israeli forces from Gaza. Now, this new framework for a possible uh, truce, along with freeing more hostages and Palestinian prisoners, came out of international meetings in Paris this weekend. Here's what the Qatari prime minister, who was at those meetings, had to say before this proposal was sent to Hamas. Uh, we have, uh, I think yesterday was uh, good progress made uh, to get uh, things back in shape and to at least to lay a foundation for the way forward. Uh, we cannot uh, say that this uh, will make us, you know, uh, in better shape very soon, but we are hoping actually uh, uh, to relay this proposal to Hamas and to get them to a place where uh, they engage positively and constructively in the process. So now that the proposal has been relayed to and received by the terror group, what can we expect? Well, Alex Markard, following developments from Washington for us. Jeremy Diamond is in Tel Aviv. Uh, Alex, let's start with you. Let's uh, just walk us through what we understand to be the framework of this potential deal. Well, and, and it is important that I think we do continue to call this a framework. These are broad ideas uh, of what could be implemented. And everybody from the Qatari prime minister uh, to the U.S. secretary of state and others have cautioned uh, that there is still a lot to figure out in terms of the details. But broadly speaking, what we have learned this would look like, according to a source who is familiar with these discussions, is that once implemented, there would be a pause in the fighting initially for around six weeks. And Becky, during that time, uh, that is when the remaining civilian hostages would be released by Hamas and the other groups who hold them. There are uh, more than 100 Israeli hostages and other nationalities still being held. But initially, the focus would be on those civilians. And at the same time, three Palestinian prisoners for every uh, civilian hostage would be released, that same three to one ratio that we saw in the first hostage release. And then uh, we would start to see second and third rounds of releases. The IDF soldiers, both the men and the women, uh, who would then be exchanged. Uh, there would be a longer pause in the fighting. Uh, we believe that Hamas would then demand a, a higher ratio, more prisoners uh, being released in exchange for those soldiers. Uh, Israel also looking, looking to get back the uh, bodies of hostages who have been killed uh, either on October 7th or since then uh, during the war, during these four months of fighting. But, Becky, you're absolutely right. The Qatari prime minister, the Israelis, the secretary of state, Antony Blinken, they're all talking about progress that was made in Paris. I asked Secretary Blinken about this yesterday. He called it a strong and compelling proposal. He said that there is some real hope going forward. But, Becky, so many questions remaining. Uh, the biggest sticking point is whether this would mean an end to the war. Hamas demanding an end to the war, while uh, Israel is not committing to that. There are also questions about Palestinian government uh, governance, about security, about aid. Uh, but there is, in the words uh, of the source who briefed me on this deal, uh, a real sense of optimism. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Becky. Yeah, good stuff. Thank you, Alex. Let's uh, get to Jeremy. Um, we know that the U.S. putting a lot of pressure on Israel um, at this point, um, not calling for a permanent ceasefire ahead of Israel conceding to one. And we know that Hamas is looking for that. Uh, but we've as, uh, understood there from Alex, we do have the um, the parameters of this deal as we understand it now. So what are we hearing from the Israelis themselves. Well, it certainly seems like this summit on Sunday in Paris was intended to try and get Israel, Egypt, Qatar, as well as the United States to have at least those parties on the same page before they go back to Hamas with this latest uh, broad framework uh, to try and get to a deal. Uh, but it is also clear that significant gaps still remain. That is one of the points that the Israeli government has made in recent days. They are also pushing back on some of the details that are being reported as part of this framework, saying that some of these uh, details include 
include conditions that they say are not acceptable to Israel, vowing to, quote, continue until complete victory uh, inside the Gaza Strip. But uh, as it relates to uh, Hamas, which at this point, that is the most important thing to find out, is whether or not these terms, this broad framework, is going to be acceptable to Hamas. They say that they are studying this proposal, but they are once again putting it in the context uh, of uh, an effort to try and end this war altogether, saying that they will uh, study this uh, framework and give their response, they say, on the basis that, quote, the priority is to stop this aggression, the brutal attack on Gaza, and to seek the, quote, complete withdrawal of Israeli forces from the Gaza Strip. So they are very much signaling that that is still their end goal. That is, of course, a position that would be untenable to the Israelis. We understand that Ismail Haniyeh, the head of Hamas's political bureau, has been invited to Cairo to review this latest proposal with Egyptian officials. That will, of course, be a key meeting to see whether or not Hamas can get on board with this and whether or not the optimism coming out of this summit on Sunday is indeed warranted. Becky? Yeah, and of course, the Egyptians and other uh, mediator and what are these ultimately are these indirect talks of course uh, or uh, between um, Israel and Hamas all right thank you uh, for that